It's almost impossible to explain how friendship happens. We bump into so many people in a lifetime, but only a few of them will we ever regard as friends. Often it's someone who's just like us, but in some cases, it's someone who is our exact opposite. Just before the war broke out, Alan Simpson and Norman Mineta were 10-year-olds living lives immune from the world's ugly realities. Simpson was a carefree kid in Cody, Wyoming. He spent his time looking for snakes and rabbits in the rugged countryside. Mineta's love was baseball. Seldom would you find him without his ball and glove in San Jose, California. Two energetic boys immersed in their own worlds until the very frightening real world interrupted. Here in the land of Buffalo Bill, the government is erecting model camp towns, towns in which they'll live unmolested, not as prisoners, but free to work and paid by the United States government. Every able-bodied person in the county, there were 30, 40, 50, 60-year-old guys out there, and they put that baby together in, in weeks. When we were first being evacuated, I had my Cub Scout uniform on, baseball, baseball glove, baseball bat. And as I got on the train, the MPs confiscated my bat. The thing that made us all concerned was the, the barbed wire fence and the guard towers and the, the guards and the guns in the tower, all aimed inside. It wouldn't matter who was out there. That would spook you up. So we board the trains at the freight station. Now for an 11-year-old kid, this is, oh boy, it's an overnight train ride. Let me tell you, if you think there was any good feeling toward the Japanese in 1941 and 42, you're crazy as hell. A restaurant owner, science says, no Japs allowed. You sons of bitches killed my son. That's pretty clear. And as the train was pulling out of San Jose, I looked around, looked at my dad, and all these tears were coming down. At Heart Mountain, the Mineta family, six of them, had to squeeze into one room. The first thing we had to do was to string rope, and that was Mama and Papa's bedroom behind the sheets over there, and my brother and I were over here, and my two sisters were over here. What helped Norman cope with life at a concentration camp, like many other boys, the Boy Scouts. They had their band, their activities, their competitions, and then one day, after so many other troops were refused, one troop from outside was willing to come to the camp and have a jamboree with the boys behind barbed wire. They were from Cody, and Al was one of them. It never even occurred to him what that visit meant. I really didn't think of that. I wanted to see if he could do better knots than I could, you know, or beaded. We did all sorts of beading, you know. Yeah, it was goofy. And then we got paired off to a, with a Boy Scout from Cody to build a pup den. Simpson and Minetta were paired together. As trivial as it seemed, it was magic. So you always have to build a moat around the tent to protect the tent from the water. So we were building this moat, and he said, do you mind if we water to cut the water to exit? That way, as luck would have it, we had a big rainstorm. Our moat worked perfectly, and the water exited to the tent below us, and that tent collapsed. And Norm says that I laughed uh, insanely. <laughs> but that can't be true. He had to be laughing, too. He's such a kick in the pants. He is just funny. I guess we're just pretty pesky guys. We still are. Well, we're going to stampede you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He's pesky, and so am I. So you don't want to stay with the bland people. You want to be with the pesky people, the, the spirited people. The spirited colt makes the best horse. A memorable beginning, but it's what happened years later that makes this friendship remarkable. As a young man, Mineta would find himself in politics. Hi, how are you? I'm Norm Mineta. Becoming the first Asian American mayor in a major US city, his hometown of San Jose. And then, in the 70s, it was off to Washington as a member of the House of Representatives. And that's about the time Alan Simpson ended up there as a senator from Wyoming. 
he a conservative Republican, me a liberal Democrat, and yet uh, our friendship is a very close one. And what I love about Al Simpson and Normanetta is they cross the aisle and they support each other. And it's not whether they're Democrat or Republican, it's because they believe in doing the right thing. By the time 9-11 hit, Mineta had already become the first Asian American presidential cabinet member in history. First as Secretary of Commerce under President Clinton, and then Secretary of Transportation under President Bush. That fateful day, after the Twin Towers collapsed, the Pentagon was hit, and a fourth plane plunged into a pasture in Pennsylvania, it was Secretary Mineta who had to devise a plan and act. At that point, we had 4,638 planes in the air over the U.S. So I said, I want all the airplanes down as soon as possible. So in two hours and 20 minutes, they got all the planes down safely and without incident. The United States was at a standstill. I've got to put together a, a regimen for security again before anyone can go back up. Suddenly, the very real lesson Secretary Mineta lived through and experienced at Heart Mountain as a young boy became the foundation for how he handled 9-11. And he had to make very difficult decisions to protect the rights of the Muslim Americans and not allowing illegal sort of search and seizures and stopping them, you know, through airport security. So I think it's Norm's experience being interned at Heart Mountain which have, makes him all the much more sensitive about protecting other people's rights. The public was saying, keep Middle Easterners off the airplanes, keep Muslims, uh, Arab Americans, whomever, from flying. Under great pressure, he stood his ground, protecting rights. He would not allow a population to be treated differently, simply because of their ancestry. One of the things we had right there at the top was no racial profiling. President Bush agreed. But we don't want to have happen today what happened to Norm in 1942. You know, it, it just about blew me off my seat when he said that. It's stereotyping that leads to, to hatred and bitterness. And they stereotype the Japanese. Hate. You know, there was hate here. And hatred corrodes the container it's carried in. Be prepared! With great difficulty comes great wisdom. Simpson and Mineta have since retired from Congress, but continue to serve their country in an equally valuable way. There are so many lessons to be learned from these two men. Take one. <laughs> Always vocal, courageously standing up for the rights of individuals, even if it clashes with their own party. We have homophobes in our party. That's disgusting to me. We're all human beings. We're all God's children. You know, so we can't pick and choose what we like about life and what we dislike. We need to take all those experiences and realize that's who we've become because of those experiences. My hero, uh, my friend, and supporter, Norm Mineta. For Norman Mineta, it was a quiet determination. He didn't harbor anger over what happened to him and his family. Instead, it was a resolve to make his country a better place. In 1988, while in Congress, he found an opportunity to fix a wrong for an entire generation. He and Simpson spearheaded the Civil Liberties Act. It was an apology to the 120,000 innocent people who were unfairly torn from their lives and thrown into these concentration camps without due process. Each surviving internee was paid $20,000. While it will never make up for what they lost, it was a resounding step towards gaining back their dignity, a priceless gesture for a prideful, but quiet people. Out of this tragedy comes this great lesson of how a government, a people, saw the wrong that was committed in 1942. And to me, when I think of that legislation, and it says, and on behalf of the American people, the Congress apologizes to those of Germany's ancestry for the gross violation of their constitutional rights. You learn, as you grow up, you learn tolerance, and, and when you live in a place like this, in five minutes you can be somewhere sitting all by yourself thinking about how, how infinitesimal you are. 
these things will be around long after I've gone. Aristotle said, friendship is a single soul living in two bodies. Perhaps that helps us better understand the rarity of this bond, a single soul that sprang to life as far back as they could remember and still not only lives, but thrives today. <laughs>